For Christmas, I purchased the ASI 294 MC Pro. And I didn't get it. So I was impatient. Decided to go mono. Hey guys, this is Steve with uh, Entering Into Space. Steve Miller, just to be exact. So, yeah, I got some new stuff and wanted to kind of show it. Everybody does unboxing videos. I kind of sucked at that because I broke into it early. But, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I got, why I got it, kind of go through a quick history of what I used to use um, for this past year. And, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll pause the video. I'm gonna hook it up to the scope <clears throat> and uh, kind of show you how I put everything together too, because that's kind of important. That's a learning experience. Um, so this is a Galaxy phone. This is what I started with. And I would literally take the phone and I had a little USB thing I would plug in here. I'd plug it into uh, this camera, this is a used, beat up, like 14 year old Canon XSI. And I had a app that would control the camera and I would sit out there all night long and hit exposure, exposure. And I did that on a little battery powered CG4 mount. Then I uh, discovered APT, which controlled the camera. Uh, still using the XSI, shot with it quite a bit until I decided I was gonna upgrade, which I upgraded to the Canon Rebel T4i. This is uh, my Mead focal reducer flattener on the front and just so happens to have a seven nanometer HA filter. This was like the workhorse. This has been, this has given me a ton of great images over this past year. Um, it's got the flip out screen. Um, I blocked the viewfinder to block out any light. I was shooting six minute exposures with it. Um, lots of noise to be expected, but really great camera. I picked it up on Amazon for like under 300 bucks. I modified it myself. I pulled the IR cut filter out of it, uh, kept the cleaning sensor in front so I didn't replace it with uh, any glass or anything. Put it all back together. Um, only had to drill out one screw. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this was it. Um, so then before Christmas, I purchased the ASI 294 MC Pro and I didn't get it. There's a lot happening in China right now. Didn't get it. So I was impatient, decided to go mono. <laughs> so here's the, this is the best I can do for unboxing. So what did I get? <clears throat> I got the ASI ZWO. It's all right, 1600 mm cool. And I've already kind of unboxed it, but we can, uh, I could show you everything that comes in the box. So, lift it off, nice protective foam. Uh, this is gonna be USB, this is your 3.0 USB. So this is actually gonna go to the back of the camera and to a USB hub or to the computer. Something like that. Um, let's see what else we got. We got an inch and a quarter nose piece, which I won't be using because I'll be using the uh, two inch flattener reducer that came, that I bought with my Mead. Let's go. And if I'm using my Newtonian, then I'm going to use my two inch um, coma corrector. Let's see what else we got. Got a 21 millimeter extension piece. Get out of here. Done. Um, we have a little short USB that's probably going to go from, uh, what's it going to go from the camera 
to the uh, filter wheel. Yeah, I got a filter wheel. Uh, another short USB, which is cool because I'm hoping this is long enough to go to my guide camera, which sits right in front of the main imaging camera. So two of these little short guys. What else? Uh, a black thing. A space, another black thing, spacer ring. Ah, another black thing, spacer metal thingy. The camera comes with these little tiny plastic spacers and they're different thicknesses from what I can feel. And my best guess is, is that you put this on the camera and then you, when you thread it into the filter wheel, uh, it actually gets it pretty close to having the bottom of the motorized filter wheel at the bottom, the camera, and some sort of a correct orientation to that so your filter wheel's not all jacked up to the side. And of course, uh, camera, get a nice camera bag and some instructions. Um, I gotta definitely read through that. So, I'm kind of thinking like, once I take this thing out and put it on the scope. It's probably never ever going to go back in this bag. It's just going to be another little bag. It does come in a nice little uh, plastic bag to keep it uncontaminated. So pulling it out, like I was saying, when you take the dust cap off, you've got this little outer ring here that unscrews. I've already threaded it onto the filter wheel and it does thread. You have to take this little collar off. You want the camera as close to the filter wheel as possible to reduce vignetting. I said it right. Uh, I'm assuming the sensor pretty much matches up with these being vertical. So uh, if you're looking at, if I'm looking at this view, when I threaded the camera on and it was tight, it was like this. And so you want to put the spacer in there so when it threads it's as close to vertical on the filter wheel as you can possibly get it. I'll put the dust cap back on. So that's basically everything that came um, in this box with the camera. What else? So moving on off screen, uh, the electronic filter wheel. Uh, the filter wheel does come with like what looks like an adapter. Uh, unscrewing this allows me to screw on the, I think it's M48 threads of the focal reducer flattener. Uh, I've got a lot of measuring to do to make sure I get, you know, as close to 55 millimeters from the sensor to the filter, I think, or at least to the focal reducer. So I've got a lot of that to do, and a lot of it's just going to be dependent on getting it all set up the best I can and then getting some light on it and see what it looks like. So filter wheel, this piece I'm going to definitely take off. This looks like a little crazy little man. Um, another inch and a quarter nose piece. So we have two of them now. Another really long USB, uh, which I don't think I'll need. Uh, looks like a threaded adapter, which I don't think I'll need. Hey, cool. Screwdriver. That, I'm assuming, is for taking the filter wheel apart to put the filters in. <coughs> and then a whole bunch of little thumb screws and shims. Oh my god. There's a lot of stuff. Like, I don't even know what to do with all this stuff. Tiny little screws. Oh, you know what these are for? I think I know what these are for. These are for if you get 31 millimeter unmounted filters, meaning they don't have a metal ring around them that threads into the filter wheel. I bet you that's what this is for. So you can actually mount them in there. Uh, so with the bundle, we got filters, narrow band, inch and a quarter HA seven millimeter. Um, inch and a quarter, seven millimeter silver two, and inch and a quarter, 
Oxygen 3, 7 nanometers. Um, read a lot of stuff about the ZWO narrowband filters not being all that great. Well, guess what? I'm going to try them anyway. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to live on the edge. I, I hear there's like a second generation filter set, so they're saying these are a lot better quality. So we're going to see. Um, I did call High Point Scientific, which is where I bought all this stuff from. Very helpful. And I uh, said, hey, you know, maybe I'll just not buy this bundle. I'll buy the filter wheel and the camera separate and get the Optolong filters for it. And they were like, they basically come out, they, they were like, they basically come out of the same factory. So anyway, and then uh, I also get the uh, ZWO inch and a quarter luminance, red, blue, green. So, and I think that's what I'm gonna do first. I think I'm, uh, I'm gonna try shooting Orion uh, first. I think that's gonna be my first, cause it's up in the, it's a good place and it's uh, bright and it's easy to find and it's uh, very photogenic. So I may just do the LRGB first off. Cause this is my very first experience with a cooled astronomy and mono camera. Like I'm just diving into it. We upgraded our camera to the uh, 290 Mini, and I'll show that to you here when I uh, break after I've got everything hooked up. Oh, yeah, and I upgraded my guide scope, uh, which I'll show you. Uh, you might be able to see it on that view, uh, to the Mead Series 6000 50 millimeter. I just went all out, man. I ain't playing. I'm done messing around. And I want to set up two rigs because I also have a six inch Newtonian, so um, I've got the old guide scope and guide camera on it, but I wanted to have a complete setup so I can just undo one scope off my mount, put a different scope on. So I've got the, another, this is my second Pegasus Astro Power Box, which um, just so you know, and if you don't know, should power the cooler, uh, the 12 volt DC cooler required for this camera. Um, so you don't have to have like an adapter or anything else. If you've got the pocket power box, it's going to come with a ton of 12 volt cords and I'll be able to power the camera with it. Let's pick it up with uh, maybe putting some filters in this filter wheel and taking it apart. Okay. Okay. Just to show you how all the filters came, uh, they all come sealed. I had to rip it. So that's a good sign that they're basically vacuum sealed in this uh, plastic bag. So this would be the HA filter. So we've got all our filters, O3, HA, S2. The uh, filter wheel comes with lots of screws to take out. So let's speed it up. And <clears throat> I think this thing will kind of like freewheel right now, seems to. So uh, now it's just a matter of putting the filters in the position uh, that you want and then knowing what that position is just so you make sure when you set it up in either astrophotography tool or Secrets Generator Pro or anything else you're using, you're gonna wanna know where your filters are at. So I'm gonna stick to the standard. Um, I'm gonna start here with a LRGB and open up my filters. Pull this out. This is the red, blue, green, and luminance filter. I'm going to put in position one. And they just simply thread in. Pipe. Red. It is going to be in position two. So blue, let's see here. We got green. Green's gonna go in position three, so RGB. And lastly, we have blue. But what I may end up doing is getting like an opaque filter, something that I can just rotate around and shoot darks without having to uh, um, go outside and put the lens cap on. Is that possible? If it is, if somebody else is doing it, let me know. Because in my mind, I think it's possible. Uh, so now I'm going to go by the, um, what they call the show. So, uh, sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen, which would be the Hubble palette. Mm -hmm. Sulfur filter, sulfur two is going to go in position five. You know, what's cool about shooting this video is if I get confused, 
I made a video. Hydrogen. All these are seven nanometers, which is uh, pretty narrow in the whole narrow band. And the last one is oxygen in position seven. I may end up switching out the luminance for like an L-Pro, something that, that gives me a little light pollution suppression. Why do I keep saying suppression? There's gotta be another word. Uh, because that's where your detail's at. So let's, uh, let's, you guys aren't pausing the video. You have no control over this video. Well, I guess you could pause it. Stop watching me. That'd be sad. Uh, but I'm gonna pause the video, go get my little air blaster thingy, blast this off, put the lid back on. And then when I return, uh, I should have all of this hooked up and then I'll just do a, a quick little recap. We got it hooked up. Filter wheel is not perfect. It's off center. I got it the best I could. Um, not sure how this camera's gonna show it, but that's kind of basically it. I haven't balanced it yet. Still have to do that. Um, one thing, the 290 mm came with one of these little short cords here. Uh, which makes it really handy because the uh, ZWO comes with two. Uh, both of them are USB 3 to USB whatever. Um, but the 290 is like a type C connector. Uh, so, but going back in the 290 box, it came with a really long one and a really short one, which is nice. So you don't have to have all this, you don't have to tie all this up. Um, the pocket power box mounted to the front up here has, comes with, like I said, I think like uh, three or four of these 12 volt cables. Uh, this one I fished out and found, and it is running down through here and then powering, hopefully, uh, the Peltier cooler, two stage cooler for the 1600. And then I've got the short cord to the guide cam and then another short cord coming out of these two USB hubs another one down to the filter wheel uh, so theoretically I think I've got everything hooked up I've got a pile of cords here but that's fine do heater I probably need to get a smaller one um, on this new mead scope uh, but right now that's basically it the USB 3.0 that fishes around uh, that's gonna be actually controlling the camera going to APT comes down through here and it comes to a, oh crap, you're not gonna be able to see it. Basically a USB hub that's sitting down in here that I have. So let's, uh, let's jump over to uh, the computer. Let's get some power to the scope and fire it up. And, and it looks like we may have to download some drivers, download some stuff and uh, see if we can't get this thing working. All right, so here we are on the computer and I think we're gonna go over here to the, um, ZWO website and see if there's a specific driver. I know there's probably a driver for the filter wheel. There's a website. Ah, filter wheel. And I found that in, uh, where am I at? I'm in support, manual and software. Let's go down here to the filter wheel and let's say download. So as soon as I plug the um, USB from the computer, uh, to my hub over here immediately heard the fan going, but it's not cooling down obviously because I haven't commanded it to Commanded it to cool down uh, Finish So we have a driver for that um, Let's see if we can let's download this ASI camera driver. I Know I have the plot ASCOM. I'm pretty sure I already have this in here because I was running the 120 MC those two drivers seem to be installed. So let's go over here to astrophotography tool. Uh, we're gonna close that off. We're gonna hit uh, and then we're gonna hold the shift and we're gonna click connect. Um, we're gonna check this CCD ASCOM because it considers a CCD. Uh, Um, color fits preview D bear. I'm really sure. I'm not shooting color. Let's click OK. 
so we're gonna do ASI camera one. Let's check driver configuration first time. Please click the properties. Uh, oh, cool. So we're doing the 1600. Um, the gain, I think I want to leave that to unity gain. It doesn't really give me, uh, doesn't come. Oh, unity gain. So presets, unity gain, 139. Let's click OK. We got the spinning wheel of death. Uh, and then click OK to that. Camera connected. Camera connected. Wow. I connected it. <laughs> uh, let's go here to gear actually tools and I think I want to go to cooler on oh Kool-Aid Kool-Aid hey Kool-Aid cool. cooling steps three timeout Let's see defines the temperature point for cooling or warming the warming aid will import oh, I don't want to warm it um, so let's back that up and let's say minus 20 it's at 24 degrees now let's change that to minus 10 I guess it times out after two minutes and uh, this is the number of steps. A lot of this uh, I've kind of already seen on YouTube, watching other people do this, but I'm gonna do it and show you. So click start to that. And it's cooling. We're cooling. I'm a little, I'm a little excited. So let's go in here to gear and connect wheel. Uh, oop, I bet you. And we're going to click properties, automatic filter wheel, one, uh, and click OK. I wonder if there's a place that sets up the filters or not. Let's click OK to that. Filter wheel connected. Filter wheel connected. So I think this is now what I'm going to see when I'm taking an image. And I'm pretty sure I have to do this auto stretch to actually see anything in live view. You know, like when I'm doing a frame and focus. Pretty sure that's what that needs to do. Um, ooh, look, we're down to 18 degrees. We're dropping. Um, so let's move that down here. Move that over here. So I'm probably going to have to figure out, oops, settings, how to, uh, nope, I've already done that. So I'm not really sure how to set up the filters, but I'll figure that out. Um, <clears throat> wow, that was kind of easy. Uh, so the only other thing I have to do now, which I'm not going to bore you with, is I'll have to go into a PhD2, start a whole new profile for the 290mm, and what else? I also have to do that in SharpCap because I'm still using that. Um, probably going to do the 1600 in SharpCap to do my polar alignment. Uh, so that I'm polar aligning through the main scope now. Wow. Ah, mind blown with all this stuff. So. I think that's pretty much it. I'm hooked up. Um, the next thing to do is just to take some pictures and see what it looks like and see if I have to incorporate any spacers or what I've got to adjust to, to get to get focused. But just that easy to get set up. All right. All right, so it's a couple days after um, I did the initial setup unboxing of the 1600 and the filter wheel. And what happened <laughs> was when I got done with that, it got clear. And so I just rushed. I honestly just rushed. I just want to get out of there. I want to see what this thing could do. And I did that. And I ran across a couple problems, issues that I was able to work through, I think, for the most part. And so I figured instead of just closing out the video, I figured I'd just add on to it just a little bit to show you a couple things of uh, what I did to mitigate the situation. And one is in SharpCap, actually connecting the guide camera. Um, a Facebook friend of mine, Justin Berkeley, actually 
helped me out. He was like Johnny on the spot when I was posting my help help on uh, one of my Facebook groups. And the other is, uh, when I get done showing you what I'm going to show you here in SharpCap, um, I'm going to also show, or actually really, uh, sorry, it wasn't SharpCap. SharpCap was also a problem. It was basically connecting my guide camera. Because I'm, I've got two cameras, both ZWO, there was a there was a clash. And so every time I thought I was looking through the new guide camera, the 290 Mini, I was actually still looking through the, um, through the main imaging camera, the 1600. So first let's jump over here to actually PhD2 and I'll show you where that problem was. It wasn't a sharp cap, it was actually PhD2 and because I couldn't guide. And then when we get done with that, then I'll jump over here really quick and then show you the final spacing to get to the 55 millimeters between the camera and the focal reducer. Okay, let's get over here into PhD2. All right, so we're firing up uh, PhD2 for guiding. <clears throat> so here's the problem. Um, if I come in here and I, let's say I had my camera selected. Actually, we can uh, come over here to APT. We can go ahead and connect, and I'll show you how I connect the 1600 and APT first. So you see it says it's automatically connected. Um, but if we disconnect it, yes, and hit shift connect, See, I've got CCD ASCOM camera chosen, not the native driver, ZWO, but CCD ASCOM. And when I click into that, I'm going to get this prompt here. When I do this drop down, I've chosen the ASI camera one. And then in properties, um, I was having some problems there. So I'm going to push that USB up to about USB limit to about 60. I think it comes default at 80. Um, and then I've got it set to unity gain, um, and then an offset of 50. This offset here is something I definitely have to learn about. And you can see it's got the ZWO ASI 1600 chosen image types raw. So that's cool. I'm going to click OK and then click OK. Camera connected. Camera's connected. Now let's minimize that. Let's go in here to PHD2. Um, click the connect button. So what was happening <coughs> was I went through my manage profile. There's my 290mm. Um, and that's something if you're doing this for the first time, you want to do a new wizard. And it'll ask you some questions about the focal length of your guide scope. A few other little questions. It's fairly easy to get through. Um, but in this camera setup tab, I didn't know there was a camera setup tab. When you choose it, see it's set to 290 mini, but for some reason, the first camera I hooked up was the uh, 1600. So you can see I can also choose it here, which I don't want to do. I want to choose the 290. Uh, that was critical, and that's what uh, my Facebook friend Justin helped me out with, because other than that, um, and I've got it set to unity gain. It's pretty much default there. Every time I chose it, they were interacting. They were both trying to, I guess, choose on the same line. I'm not really sure what the verbiage is there. But then doing that, clicking this little, this little uh, radio camera setup button here, I was able to change it back to the 290. It remembers that every time now. So now I can connect all. And it's, you know, it's wanting to connect the mount, which is great it does that at the same time and then I can jump down here and start a loop so I wasn't able to guide that night but I definitely was able to um, to get that solved so tonight hopefully has some clear skies and I can uh, guide and take some longer exposures so let's get over here and I'll show you a super quick as quick as I can I don't do anything quick my videos are always long see I can't even edit that out uh, but I'll show you the spacing that I came up with to get the 55 millimeters from the, uh, the camera sensor to the focal reducer that I'm using. So this is basically like a really quick 
explanation of back focus. I still had it wrong. I had a really good image. I'll show you at the end of the video, but I still had it wrong. Um, that's a big emphasis on wrong. Anyway, let's, uh, let's look at the scope here and I'll show you um, the final verdict. And then we'll jump over here onto the internet and we'll go into High Point Scientific's website and I'll actually show you where all the information was on the right spacers for me to use to get to the 55 millimeters that I ignored. Because I was in a hurry. Anyway, let's look at the scope. Okay, so really quick, you've got the camera that's got uh, 6.5 millimeters of backspace to the sensor. You get the 20 millimeter, uh, oh my God, hush up. The 20 millimeter uh, filter wheel. You got like a T2 adapter here, mail to mail thread. This little 11 millimeter collar came on, comes on the camera, the dust cap is over it. And then you've got the 16.5 millimeter spacer and you've got a ring to go to the correct threads and then I have my reducer. So the 55 millimeters is not from the glass. It's actually from this flange right here back. So from here to here is 55 millimeters. Okay, so over here at High Point site, uh, what you want to do is all you have to do is just go in and type uh, 1600 uh, mm and you just get the camera. So once the camera comes up, uh, scroll down. Where's the little pictures? Oh, there they are. <laughs> uh, keep scrolling over. And this picture right here, second from the right, click on it. And so here's the setup. Uh, I think I can explode it here. So that's what they're saying. The 6.5 millimeters is from the face of the camera back. That's the sensor. 20 millimeters of uh, filter wheel. You've got the T2 to T2 adapter. That's a two millimeter surface right there. You've got an 11 millimeter ring. And like I said, this ring right here will come already on the camera with a dust cap on it. Uh, and then you've got the 16.5 you come with a I think it also comes with a 21 but you want to use the 16.5 millimeter extender and then you get this M42 to M48 adapter it's going to thread on here so that then the focal reducer will thread onto that and that gets you to the magic number of basically 56 to 55 to 56 it does come with shim so uh, I'm going to have to probably use one just to kind of fine tune it comes with some thin plastic shims, which I talked about earlier, uh, but then that should get me a whole lot better off. So there you go. All right, so there you have it. We unboxed, we screwed around and tried to hook it up wrong. Uh, we went through everything that we got. We jumped over there in PhD two. We showed some issues there. And then how I hooked everything up to get it to the proper back focus of 55 millimeters so uh, at the end of this video I'm going to show you my first LRGB uh, image of Orion Nebula it was only five minutes five minutes this camera is amazing and tonight if we get some clear skies I'm going to try to do a short narrow band project so it looks like um, I might have to do maybe the seagull nebula or something like that Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned. I'll, I'll follow up with a processing video after this. So stay tuned. Clear skies and sharp minds.